Hello, uh, this is Calvary's Corner. My name is Brent Gullo. I want to share a passage of scripture with you and some good principles from it. Uh, Isaiah 39 says this, At that time, Merodach Baladan, the son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent letters and a present to Hezekiah, for he had heard that he had been sick and was recovered. And Hezekiah was glad of them and showed them the house of his precious things, the silver and the gold and the spices and the precious ointment and all the house of his armor and all that was found in his treasures. There was nothing in his house nor in all his dominion that Hezekiah showed them not. Then came Isaiah the prophet unto King Hezekiah and said unto him, What said these men? And from whence came they unto thee? And Hezekiah said, They are come from a far country unto me, even from Babylon. Then said he, What have they seen in thy house? And Hezekiah answered, All that is in mine house have they seen. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not showed them. And the passage goes on a few more verses, but God was not happy that Hezekiah showed these men everything in his house. And just briefly, I'd like to say uh, just three things. Number one, uh, your body, my body, a believer's body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Um, we invite Jesus to live uh, in our heart. We get saved and the Spirit of God dwells inside of us. And let me say, first off, as far as that temple is concerned, there are some things that only the believer in God need to share. Not everybody needs to know everything that you struggle with. There are some things that are reserved just for God. You and I have a relationship with God that is private, that is not like anything else. Uh, you and I need to be able to go to God and confess to him in great detail and great honesty um, sins that we've committed, thoughts that we've had, motives that we've had, lack of desire, apathy, uh, anything that God might bring to our attention in our heart, we need to be able to confess to him. And we're not obligated to run out and go tell even the closest person to us. There are some things that are reserved just for you and God. There's no other relationship like that relationship. Number two, your home. Not everybody needs to know everything that goes on in our home. Our home is a private place. Uh, there are some special relationships in your home and in my home. And I'm not obligated to run out and broadcast some of the struggles, some of the problems, some of the goods and the bads and the, uh, the disciplinary things that, that, that I uh, implement in my home and, and, and be transparent about every little detail that goes on in my home. That's my home. Uh, it's your home. Uh, children, pray for your mom and dad. They're trying to make right choices. They have uh, spiritual battles that you know nothing about. Pray for your dad and, and your mom. Uh, Satan doesn't want them to succeed as parents or doesn't, and doesn't want them to succeed in marriage. Pray for your parents. They're trying to make right choices in their own personal life and for their family. Uh, but what happens in your home, it should stay in your home. Uh, it should be private. That's your home. Uh, and God has a special plan for your home and your family. Uh, but you don't have to run out and tell everything, tell, tell, tell everybody that goes, that you know what goes on in your home. Keep it private. Keep it uh, in your home. And then thirdly, God's house. You know, there are God's men all over the world, all over this nation that are trying to make right choices for their uh, congregation. Uh, we need to pray for them. Uh, you know, Often in life, we don't know what we would do in a particular situation until we're right there, ready to make the choice. And there are God's men who are trying to do the right thing in an awkward situation, in a circumstance that's kind of fluid and uh, oftentimes changes from week to week, service to service. We haven't been there. We don't know what they're going through. We don't have, the, have not gone through necessarily the same struggles. They have enough uh, of a struggle with, the, with the, the, the spiritual warfare that they're dealing with. They don't need God's people uh, to target them as, w as well and to discourage them. Let's pray for them in our private life. Let's encourage them when we're able to. They're trying to make right decisions for their home and for their congregation. Let's pray for them. Let's uh, acknowledge them and, 
and remember that we haven't walked where they've walked. We've not st stood in their, in their shoes. Every church is different, and God's men need to be prayed for, uh, that, that God would protect them. Uh, and we don't need to know all the business that goes on in every church. God, God didn't put us there. God put us where we are. Pray for our preacher and pray for your preacher and, and, uh, and go forward. Uh, God was not happy that Hezekiah showed these men everything, all the specifics in his house. You know, and I think that if we consider our, the temple of the Holy Ghost, we consider our home that we live in and the people that we are, live with and our loved ones, and we consider God's house, and we uh, take inventory, and in that order, our personal life, our home life, and our church, and we have the right approach and the right attitude and are honest with God, that's a good formula for revival. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. God bless you.